Disclaimer. The content in this video is for educational and informational purposes only. It is intended to promote ethical hacking practices, focusing on responsible techniques and methods. We strictly oppose any illegal activities, and any misuse of the information in this video is entirely your responsibility. Always ensure you have explicit authorization before performing any security testing or vulnerability assessments on systems, networks, or applications. Unauthorized activities are illegal and could result in severe penalties. The creators of this video take no responsibility for any misuse or consequences arising from the information shared here. In 2009, Microsoft's MSDN blog published an article titled Happy 10th Birthday Cross-Site Scripting, indicating that XSS was born around 1999, which was in the previous century. Although the article ends with a statement hoping for the death of XSS 10 years later rather than its birth, let's hope that 10 years from now we'll be celebrating the birth, not the death, of cross-site scripting. We all know that even after 20 years, XSS remains a popular vulnerability. From unknown small company websites to well-known giants like Facebook or Google, XSS vulnerabilities occasionally appear. This indicates that defending against this attack is not an easy task. Welcome. My name is Kai. I'm a hacker. I've been hacking for the past five years. I started as a website developer. The love for security led me to pen testing and eventually bug bounty. I have recently joined the bug bounty and so far I'm addicted and completely loving it. Here, we have a website that we will be hacking and trying a few excess payloads. I will try to best explain my methodology. I hope you find this interesting. I know most people will give you a lot of reason why it is good to copy-paste XSS payloads from GitHub and maybe spray them on an input and the adrenaline rush of seeing an XSS fire can be like doing hallucina genre. But I wouldn't want to find myself in my deathbed trying to figure out how I wasted my life using other people's payloads and burp suite to trigger XSS. Wouldn't it be fun if you figured it out yourself by tinkering and trying out, and by failure you gain more knowledge? That's the best way to learn. Websites are made of various components. It can be links, images, buttons, inputs, and many more. First thing, you should go through the website. On cases you are using Burp Suite or Kaido, you should click through the website and the Burp Suite, or Kaido will capture the request for you to view and analyze. If you want to know more about Kaido and Burp Suite, you can check my videos on the use and the difference of the two. As you can see, the website has three inputs for searching and the many pictures on the books will be very useful in the future. I will definitely share some amazing secrets on how to use them to find path traversals. To be good in XSS, you should always keep the following statement in mind. Context is very important. By context, I mean, try to understand where the input is. Whether the results are being reflected on the page or not, I will be showing all that in a minute. Let's check the context on our website. Let's make a simple search in our search inputs as follows. If you're familiar with browser's dev tools, you will find out that view sources page and inspect code will really come in handy when it comes to XSS. Let me show you what I'm talking about. In the view sources page, the first thing you will do is press control plus F. This will help us search for the input we just did. We will go through the view sources page to identify where the result is appearing. The first results appear on the anchor link inside the listing. The fourth and fifth instance appears in the inputs value as you can see on the view sources page. Our second set of letters also appear in the same way as our first results. We will do the same for our third search and the result will be the same as before. Let's clear the input search and we will begin trying a few tricks so that we can identify whether there is a sanitizer. Since the website is not under any firewall, we only have to figure out what the sanitizer is sanitizing or removing, and eventually how we will escape the anchor tag and fire up the XSS payload. To be on the safe side, especially on input sake, it is always good to close the tag using quotes, either single or double, depending on the context, and maybe if need be, the greater than symbol or the forward slash in other contexts. So, first we will test with the double quotes, a greater than a symbol and some text. As you can see, the text appear to be out of the input tag. Let me explain why. On the view page source, let's find the results of our search. First, you will realize that the result still appears on the anchor tag, but on the input value, you will realize that the text is out of the double quotes and the greater than symbol. 
This is because by using the double quotes and the greater than symbol, we are escaping the input value sandbox. Therefore, unlike our first search, the value of the, the input gets off the input's value sandbox and display off of it. In the spirit of trying different ideas, we can try to use two double quotes and some text to see the results, and as you can see, the text disappears. Next, let's go to the view page source and search for the results. The same results, but as usual, the value of the input appears to be outside the input tag. But since it is just text and the text doesn't have a tag outside the input tag, it won't display and won't appear on the page. This gives me another idea. Let's go back to the index page and make the following search. We will use a search similar to before, but to test whether we can inject HTML to the page, we will use an underline tag. And as you can see, the text now appears, but it doesn't show an underline. This is because we didn't completely get off the input. To do so, we will need to use the greater than symbol to escape it. Now that we have identified, we can add tags. We will use the script tag to try some payload. Let's close the tag as we did earlier and add just the script opening tag and alert tag to try the payload. But as you can see, the sanitizer removes the script tag, so this one won't work. Let's try another tag element. Next, let's try the IMG tag. We will close the tag as usual, and the SRC will be X for our payload. We will use the on mouse over so that when the image SRC isn't reachable, the XSS will fire. But as you can see, the IMG tag disappears and the payload doesn't fire. This is because inline tag can't operate inside another inline tag. Therefore, the IMG tag won't work either. Next up, let's try iframes. First, we will close the tag. Then we will use the iframe with SRC of X like we did for IMG tag. Then we will add an attribute of Oneror, same as the IMG but it seems like it doesn't work. Now let's start the mouse over attribute. It also doesn't work. Since the search is connected to the URL search param, we can make the changes. And as you can see, that doesn't work either. Next, let's try the JavaScript function since it works inside anchor tag. As you can see, the JavaScript is also removed by the sanitizer. So when you have tried elements on tags and you realize that they don't allow the payload to fire, it is always good to try attributes. In our case, we will try the on mouse over, but this time round we will close the anchor tag with double quote and add the on mouse error with a value of alert one. The reason why this fires is because we close the anchor tags href with double quotes therefore escaping the sandbox and the payload fires. So finally try my three step methodology and give me feedback, I would really love that. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.